The purpose of this video is to review what you recall from previous math classes about slope, parallel lines, and perpendicular lines. Recall or remember from your previous math classes that when two lines are parallel, they always have either equal slopes or the same slopes. So if we're asked to determine whether or not two lines are parallel, what we really want to do is look at and compare their slopes. If they're the slopes are exactly the same, then we can conclude that the lines are indeed parallel. If their slopes are different, then we know that the lines are not parallel. So in number one, where we're given the coordinates of those four points and asked to explain whether or not the two lines are parallel, so we want to know is line AB parallel to line CD, what we're really looking to determine is whether or not these two lines have exactly the same slopes. So I'm going to go ahead and use slopes to explain why or why not these two lines are parallel. So the first thing I have to do is recall how I would find the slope of a line. And I'm going to use or find the slope of a line by using the slope formula. Some of you will recall from your middle school math or your algebra class that slope is y2 minus y1 or change in y over x2 minus x1, the change in the x. So if you like that formula and you're used to that formula, keep using that. I'm going to use the Greek letter delta to represent the word change in. So I'm going to say my slope is the change in the y values. And I've got to go back and fix that because I put an x on top, which is indeed incorrect. So it's the change in the x values. Sorry, the change in the y values over the change in the x values. So these two formulas are two different ways of representing the same or writing the same formula. So the first thing I'm going to do is go find the slope of line AB, and I'm going to indicate to the person reading my paper that I'm finding the slope of line AB. I'm going to write down the formula that I'm using. Slope is equal to change in y over change in x. The two y values for AB are 5 and 9. And the two x values for points A and B are 1 and 3. So the slope of line AB is going to be a negative 4. And I can actually just grab my calculator and plug this all into my calculator. 5 minus 9 over 1 minus 3 tells me the slope of that line is 2 or 2 over 1. Now that I've found the slope of line AB, I'm going to go find the slope of line CD. So again, I'm going to indicate to whomever is reading my paper that I'm going to find the slope of line CD. Again, I'm going to put the formula down on my paper. And my two Y values for points C and D are 2 and 6. And my two X values for C and D are 2 and 4. And when I punch that into my calculator, and again, I'm going to do this all in one step, 2 subtract 6 over 2 subtract 4, I find that the slope of line CD is 2. The reason I was looking at slopes was so I could compare them. Since their slopes are both the same, I know the lines are parallel. So yes, these lines are parallel because they have the same slope. So I would have to say, if I were doing or thinking about big key ideas for this video, one big key idea is that lines that are parallel have slopes that are equal. OK, number two says, write an equation of the line that passes through the point whose coordinates are 2, 3, and that is parallel to the line whose equation is y equals negative 2x subtract 5. Because these guys are parallel, I know they're going to have to have the same slope. So the slope of this first line is going to be negative 2. I also want the slope of my new line to be negative 2. 
So I'm going to take a look at the point whose coordinates are 2, 3. It's that purple point on the graph right there. I want to do the equation of a line that passes through that purple point with a slope of negative 2. So if I want, I can go ahead and graph this and find my, or find my line or graph my line and then write its equation from the graph. And if you're a visual learner, I would recommend that. So from here, I want a slope of negative 2. So in other words, I want my line to be a downhill line whose rise over run is negative 2 over 1. So there would be my line. And I can see from that picture that the y-intercept is 7. So one way I could write this equation is y equals negative 2x plus 7. If you're not a visual or a graphic person, you can write your equations algebraically. And you can do that using the point-slope form of a line, which is my personal favorite. This says y subtract the point or the y-coordinate of the point you're trying to pass through is equal to the slope that you want times x subtract the x value of the uh, x coordinate of the point that you're trying to write this line through. So in order to do this algebraically without writing the graph, my y value is 3. So on the left hand side I would have y subtract 3. We already decided we want our slope to be negative 2, the same as the original line. And then x subtract the x coordinate that we want of 2. That equation that I wrote in blue and the equation that I wrote in purple are exactly the same. They are two different ways to express exactly the same line. In either of them, as long as you show all of your work, is good for full credit for this question. I'm going to talk a little bit about the blue equation because I'm going to manipulate that just a little bit algebraically and watch what happens when I do that. I'm going to start by going ahead and distributing the negative 2 on the right hand side and then adding 3 to both sides. So notice that when I simplify that equation in the blue, I end up with the same thing I got when I solved that equation or solved that problem graphically. So again, graphical solution, algebraic solution, both get you to the right spot. I am kind of partial to the uh, algebraic solution, and here's how come. If my y-intercept is at a half or a fifth or something other than a, a whole number, it's going to be very hard to solve this problem graphically. And for that reason, I think the algebraic solution is a bit better way to go. Um, but if you, again, if your brain sees it better graphically, draw the graph. Or you can do both and use it as a check. All right, here's something that you may or may not seen before. Where parallel lines have slopes that are equal, perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. So when I say negative reciprocals, what that means is I mean one of the lines has a positive slope, the other one has a negative slope. Which makes sense, because if they were both positive, there's no way they could both be perpendicular to each other. And reciprocals is exactly what it sounds like. Reciprocals are two numbers such as two-thirds and three-halves, where someone has switched the numerator and the denominator of the fraction. So in number three, it says write an equation of the line that passes through the point 0, 5 and is perpendicular to the line with the equation y equals one-third x plus 5. Since this line is going to be perpendicular to the given line, I know automatically that the slopes have to be negative reciprocals. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go find the slope of my original line. The slope of my original line is 1 third. The slope of a line perpendicular, which I'm going to indicate using slope and then that subscript for perpendicular, because this guy was a positive 1 third, his negative reciprocal is going to be negative 3 over 1. So I want my line to pass through the point whose coordinates are 0, 5, which is represented by the red dot on that graph, with a slope of negative 3 over 1. 
So again, I can either solve this graphically by plotting the points, taking a look at what the line looks like in the graph, and then finding my y-intercept and going from there. And if I do it graphically, I end up with y equals negative 3x plus 5 for a solution. Or if I don't want to take the time to draw the graph and I want to solve it algebraically, I can say y subtract the given y coordinate, which is 5, is equal to the slope that I want, negative 3, times x subtract the given x coordinate, which is 0. And again, either of those that I just circled represent correct answers. If you want to take this guy uh, that's written in point slope form and convert him to slope intercept form, you're simply going to distribute the negative 3 on the right hand side and add 5. So again, either one of those is a correct and complete solution to that problem. All right, so I've given you a lot to think about in this video. Like always, I want you to flip up to the top of the next page, summarize in your own words the key ideas and important understandings that you need to be able to recall from the video, and then go ahead and see what you can do with the questions on page 16. Remember, if you can't answer these questions, that's your cue that you need to go back and you need to review some of the material that was mentioned in the video because you're missing, on, missing out on some of the important ideas or the key understandings that you need to know about parallel and perpendicular lines.